Bedlam got pronounced dead again. Today. What's that? Bedlam got pronounced dead again today. It's been dead a while. Yeah, I, I'd, assume, I'd assume by the way you've talked about it that which, didn't really serve. Which, which more did this one? Well, the first thing, you know what? I, I wrote some notes up on that. <laughs> you know, the first thing is, is we got to one, quit talking about it. I mean, it's <laughs> over, right? So I just, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. I'm going to give you guys a chance to challenge me. So, so I'm going to state facts. And if at any time I say something that is not a fact, you guys can stop me. I think that's fair, right? That, isn't that what we want? Right. Okay. OU's officials were in negotiations with the SEC for months and months before anybody in this league or the conference knew about it. No objections? Okay. During those multi-billion dollar conversations, I wonder if Bedlam was ever brought up at that point instead of the money. Okay. Bedlam is history. We all know that. It's, we've known that. Because OU chose to follow Texas and the money to the SEC. It's okay. Is that a fact? Okay. So now... We're having what I think are childish discussions, in my opinion, okay, over something that's done. And I would like to like make this the last statement I have because I have no hard feelings, but what's going on now is, is almost a situation with a husband and a wife or a girlfriend and a boyfriend. When you know you're dead wrong and you try to turn the table and make them think they're wrong. When Oklahoma State has no part in this, we didn't have anything to do with their negotiations with the SEC. We didn't have any choice on choosing to leave the conference. They did. So everybody needs to get over it and move on and quit trying to turn the tables. It's somewhat comical that they still want to bring us into this equation. I want somebody here to give me one example of what Oklahoma State had to do with this. I'm listening, really, and this is like, I'm not the head coach, I'm just a guy on the street. I, I just want somebody to tell me what one thing that myself, Chad Weiberg, or Dr. Shrum, or our regents had to do with any of this going on. So let's not turn the tables. Let's just say, hey, look, we chose to follow Texas and take the money, and we're going to the SEC. It's all good. But let's quit talking about it, and let's talk about football. That's the way I feel about it. No hard feelings. And I like Joe C., but it is what it is, right? we we got to quit beating around the bush and call it the way it is. You even like Chris Del Conte. Yeah, I mean, but but we don't hear anything about him. So, so, so Mike, this is Chris is trying to figure out a way to spend all the money that he has in his budget. So he's busy. He is. This isn't your sport, but would you want to see cowboy sports that are non-football play? Oh. Those things are over my head. So one thing I do not have to worry about is what the other sports do, and. It's all irrelevant for a lot of reasons, I think we all know, but people have kind of been beating around the bush instead of just calling it like it is. And I hope this will end it from Oklahoma State standpoint. Um, if Dr. Shrum and Chad Weiberg and the other head coaches and then um, Joe Castiglione and whoever makes the decisions down there decide to play the other sports, I think that's awesome. But that's not something that I play a part in. What else? Anything else? But if, but if TV came knocking and said, we're yeah. paying X amount of dollars to, to, to get them going again? I, I said this in Dallas, and I, and I said it about a month ago. Yes. If certain television networks come in and say, we are willing to do this for that, then administrators are going to make that decision based on money. And that's not a decision I'm involved in. If Chad Weiberg or Dr. Shrum comes to me and says, look, this is been worked out based on an exorbitant amount of money, I'm going to say, okay, I get it. I'll do whatever I'm told. Um, but highly unlikely based on the circumstances of the way it's sitting at this particular time. Here's a report today with quotes from both OU and OSU's athletic director saying that Bedlam won't be played once Oklahoma joins the SEC. I just want to ask you your thoughts on in-state rivalries from being a player at Cade, Kent State, played in Kansas, uh, Clemson, South Carolina, and your time here at Oklahoma and OSU, uh, playing OSU. And is it a game you'd like to see somehow make work? Um, I didn't. I didn't hear that. So 
like I said, I like to keep things simple, uh, be the last one to find out this way it happens at my house. Uh, sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it isn't. Uh, I love rivalry games for all the right reasons. Uh, so if that's what they've decided to do, that's what they've decided to do. My opinion really doesn't matter. But I, I, I love rivalry games um, for all the reasons people have a, a, a deep, a genuine uh, investment in their, in their school and take incredible pride. And so uh, what that does in those environments is, is really cool. And, and I, again, I'm a, as I've said before, I'm a traditionalist at heart. So, um, you know, I understand, you know, what the rivalries look like, whether it's as a Sunflower State showdown or uh, that's Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, or uh, and you go down and list all the other ones that are out there. Um, but those are, are, are a great thing for, for college athletics. For more information, you can visit TulsaWorld.com.